When the user opens this database, they get notified that the shortcut control P creates a pivot table. So let me try that, control P. And what is happening in the background, that it creates a pivot table in Excel and then puts it into an access report that's going to look like this. So the question is how did we manage this? It asks do you want to save this report? I'm going to say no, but in the future you can say yes each time and you get one for each week, each month, whatever you want. The database is basically a very simple one. I'm going to the relationships, it has only three tables, very simple. Then I created a query. In design view it's, it looks like this. It has the order date of the orders table, the ship country of orders and then it has a calculation. Let me show you. The calculation is very simple. It takes a new field name, total colon, space and then it uses the unit price field times the quantity type field. So the end result looks like this. So how do we get to that pivot table that I showed you before? We have to do that with Excel. Because Access 2013 does not have pivot table capabilities anymore. Maybe it will in the future, but not at this time. So we are going to create a VBA code that is going to do that. I'm storing that in module 1, so I created in VBA Alt F11 a new module. Insert the module. Okay. And there is a subroutine that I happen to call pivot from Excel. We want to talk to Excel, so we need a reference to the Excel library and we also need a reference to the DAO library. You do that through tools, references, and make sure that those are on the Excel library should be on and the ADO library should be on, Data Active Object. And if you can't find that, look for the acedao.dll. Based on those references, we can create these variables. Then we use OXL, which is of the Excel application type, to create an object of Excel dot application. Uh, I make it invisible so it happens in the background. You don't see Excel at all. If you want to see what is going on, make that visible. Then we add to the collection of workbooks a new workbook. We capture that with the variable OWB, which is of the workbook type. Then we capture the first sheet in that workbook. And then we talk to the current database. And we open the record set that I happen to call query order totals, the query I showed you. Capture it with the variable ORS. Then we copy from the record set ORS into the worksheet cells 1, 1, that is cell A1. We copy the whole record set. Uh, we add field names to it. So we loop through the fields count. Remember in access all these variables are zero based, so they start at zero, whereas in Excel everything, almost everything starts at one. Okay. And then we put the field name in there, but make it uppercase, just for formatting purposes. And then we, uh, once that has been done, we say to all the cells the entire column should auto fit, so everything fits. And then we call the pivot table wizard of the worksheet of Excel actually. And we capture that with the variable O table. O table is of the pivot table type. And we have a pivot field type variable and later on a report variable. Okay. Once we have that pivot table wizard, it starts automatically a new sheet in Excel and we talk to one of the fields that I happen to call ship country. Remember everything thing was uppercase so it's very case sensitive 
and we put that in the row field. Then we reset O field to another pivot field, this time tall called total. It is of the data field type, that means it's, it puts values in there. We use the sum function unless you want the average. We format everything nicely. Then we take another field from the collection of pivot fields, which has the name order date. We put that in the column field. And then we are going to group that field. Those are date, happen to be dates. And I'm going to group them by year. If you want them by month, go ahead. In order to do so, we set O range to, to the data range starting in cells 1. We use the group procedure. And that has a series of arguments. We went to start when to end, by what unit, and then finally the periods. Which periods do you want? You store that in an array, and the array has a series of arguments. The first argument is seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, quarters, years. I only did the years. If you want more, you get a more detailed report. Then we go back to access, or we have been in access actually all the time because it's running this code in access, we create a report. We capture that with the variable O report. We talk to the range that we had already defined here, and we take the entire range around that range and copy a picture. Then we do a paste command do command, run command, space, paste. And then we open that report to just see it. It was created, but it's not visible yet, so we open it in the preview view. And then don't forget to close the workbook, because we use that only temporarily, invisible in the background. We close it, we don't save it. And then we quit Excel. So Excel is closed, otherwise it stays hovering in the background. That's what the subroutine does. So it talks to Excel and does all the work. Then I did a few more extras. I created a macro that you have to call auto-execute. That means it runs automatically when you open access. And I put a message box in there that I showed you way at the beginning that tells you what the shortcut is. Then I created another macro, auto-keys. And that has a sub macro in it, control P. The caret stands for the control key. And then we run within that macro a function. And the function I happen to call run pivot, function run pivot. And all that function does is it called it calls pivot from Excel. What is that? That is the subroutine I showed you before. So all we have to do now is find out how did we get those macros? First the auto-executable one that runs automatically. All I did is I put a message box action in there. And the message box action says use control P to create a pivot table, beep, yes, type none, etc. When you close that macro, make sure you call it auto-execute. A similar sto story for auto keys. But this time you need to know a little bit more. How do you create that sub macro? You make sure that under design that you show the action catalog and that allows you to create a sub macro inside this macro. So you just click on this and then you create this thing. And then inside that sub macro that listens to the shortcut control P, you put a, the run code command. And the run code needs a function. And that is the function I showed you a few seconds ago. Run pivot. Don't forget to open and close the parentheses. Functions need open close parentheses. Okay. So now that function will run. Closing this. So now when I do control P, it's working in the background. 
you don't even see Excel at all unless you had asked for that, and it made this beautiful pivot table. You have to adjust that to your needs, of course, with your own field names, etc. So it did everything by year, 1994, 95, 96, it gives you grand totals, etc. This, this is dead, of course. In Excel it's alive, but in Access it's dead, because Access does not have pivot table capability anymore. So uh, n next week or next month you have to do this one again and save them so you can see what your situation was all the time. Again, it's based on a query, and the query was exported to Excel. In Excel it was manipulated, so it became a pivot table, and then it was put in a report as a picture. Copy and paste. You uh, probably need to know much more, so I, I want you to be aware that in order to do this very confidently and very professionally, you need to know much more about VBA. On this CD-ROM, more than 1500 slides, you can find it at genesispc.com, you will find all these tools that you could ever dream of. It has helped thousands of people to become professional in access. The price may be a little high, but remember, you can give this CD-ROM to your co-workers, to your employees, to your boss, whatever, and um, they can copy it and learn from it.